Hey there aviators, this is Vince Riley. Today we're going to have a quick chat about TERSAs or Terminal Radar Service Areas. As a flight instructor, I like to make videos that focus on areas that my students struggle with most. And in one of my most watched videos about airspace, which incidentally has almost a half million views, I mentioned that TERSAs were a thing of the past and were going to be replaced by Class C airspace. Well, the FAA has proved me wrong. So before we get into this deep dive, make sure you smash that like button and give this video a thumbs up. So let's talk about what we're gonna see on the VFR sectional. We'll start by looking at Rockford Tursa, just west of Chicago, and compare that to Class C airspace. The first thing you notice is that Tursas are all labeled in black, whereas Class C, or Charlie airspace, is labeled in magenta. Although the Airman's Information Manual mentions that Tursas are marked in black, you'll notice that the rings are gray, whereas the rings of Class C match the labeled name with magenta, as well as the associated altitudes for the top and bottom of each ring. The top and bottom of tersas are labeled like the name in black. At the center of each tersa, you'll find Class D, or Delta airspace. So let's take a look at Gulfport Tursa in Mississippi. Its outer rings begin at 3,000 MSL and continue up to 10,000 feet. The inner ring begins at 1,900 feet MSL and goes to 10,000 feet. And of course, the most inner ring associated with Class D airspace has key extensions and starts at the surface and goes up to 10,000 feet. If you're a big fan of foreflight like I am, and you're using foreflight in the aeronautical view, this is how tersas are depicted, with altitudes labeled on the inside of each ring. So now that we know what they look like, let's talk about what a tersa is. In the Airman's Information Manual, Chapter 3, Section 3-5-6, we can read that I actually wasn't lying to you when I taught you that all TERSAs were eventually going to be replaced. It states that the Radar Service Area Program, or ARSA, was eventually going to replace all TERSAs. However, comma, the ARSA requirements became relatively stringent, and it was subsequently decided that TERSAs would have to meet the ARSA criteria before they would be converted. To date, I have counted 22 TERSAs around the United States, and in my opinion, there's probably just going to be more and more as lots of airports with terminal radar facilities will not be able to meet new, more stringent requirements to become Class C, or Charlie Airspace. If you've seen more or less, go ahead and put that in the comments down below and let everyone know how many you've found. So, in the Airman Information Manual, the AIM, we read that TERSAs were never controlled airspace. They have no operating rules in Part 91, and it's not a class of airspace. So remember, anytime you're in a TERSA, you need to abide by the airspace you are in. So here's a trick question. What are the visibility and cloud clearance requirements for a TERSA? Remember, TERSAs are not a class of airspace and therefore have no visibility and cloud clearance requirements except for the airspace in which they reside. If we take a look at FAR Part 71, you can see there's no airspace listed for TERSAs. So another trick question, what is the equipment and communication requirements for TERSAs? Essentially, there is no equipment or communication requirements inside of a TERSA, except for the Class D airspace. But for more clarification on this question, let's turn to the Airman's Information Manual, Chapter 4, specifically Section 4-1-18, Paragraph Bravo. We can read that the purpose of a TERSA is to provide separation between all participating VFR aircraft and IFR aircraft operating within the area defined as a terminal radar service area. In the AIM it states, pilot participation is urged but not mandatory. It also states to use the term negative TERSA service or to make a similar comment during your initial communications with the TERSA controlling agency if you don't desire the services. One important thing to remember is that these services are not to be interpreted as relieving pilots of their responsibilities to see and avoid other traffic while operating in basic VFR weather condition and also to adjust the flight path if necessary to preclude serious wake encounters or to maintain appropriate terrain and obstacle clearance or to remain in weather that's conducive to VFR minimum of the appropriate airspace. All right, and it wouldn't be worth making a video if we didn't show a few examples. First, we'll look at Macon, which is just southeast of the Atlanta Class B airspace. If you're right here at 5,000 feet MSL, inside the Tursa, which class of airspace are you in? Right, Class E. What are your VFR cloud clearance and visibility requirements? Right, three statute miles and basic cloud clearance. Basic cloud clearance basically translates to 500 feet below, 1,000 above, and 2,000 horizontal distance from clouds. Do you have any communication requirements? 
No, but you will notice that the TERSA frequency is the same frequency as Atlanta Approach. Therefore, it would be advisable to at least contact Atlanta Approach if you are headed to make an airport and see if services are available. If passing through the TERSA to another destination, I would definitely monitor Atlanta Approach. Additionally, there are no ads B requirements in this example. Now, let's head a little further to the northeast. Here, we'll find the TERSA for Augusta Regional Airport. If you are right here at 2,400 feet MSL, which class of airspace are you in? Right, Class D. What are your basic VFR cloud clearance and visibility requirements? Right, the same as the last example, three statute miles visibility and basic cloud clearance. How about your communication requirements? Remember, Class D, you're required to have two-way radio communications before entering Class D airspace. Additionally, there's no requirement to have ADS B. For this next example, let's head way out northwest to Great Falls, Montana. If you're flying here inside the TERSA, en route to another airport at 12,500 feet MSL, which class of airspace are you in? Right, Class E. What are your VFR minimum visibility and cloud clearance requirements? Remember, you're in Class E airspace, or ECHO airspace, above 10,000 feet. So it's five statute miles visibility, 1,000 feet above, 1,000 feet below, and one statute miles from the cloud. What about your communication requirements with the TERSA? Oh, you're getting good at this. You're right, there's no requirement to participate. However, ADS B is required since you're flying in Class E airspace above 10,000 feet MSL and you're above 2,500 feet AGL. In conclusion, remember, TERSAs are not a class of airspace. There is no requirement to participate and you need to abide by the regulations associated with the airspace in which the TERSA reside. Well, thanks for watching today. Remember, it takes a lot to produce these videos. So if you'd like to help produce the next video, hit that super thanks button down below. Whether or not you choose to support the production of the next video, you can certainly participate in deciding what I produce next. So don't hesitate to suggest what you'd like to see in the next video in the comments down below. 